What's going on everybody? Fetter here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. So a slightly different video today as you can see by the view here and the noise. I apologize for that. I'll try to edit as much as I can in post. I do have a long drive home and I figured this would be a good opportunity for me to just talk to you guys about the current state of the Vox Lab Aquila, kind of like a buyer beware. If you're interested in buying the machine uh, at the moment, there, are, there were some developments that happened that caused there to be three different versions uh, of the machine. There is currently a G32 machine that is the original Aquila that I've had for 10 months now. Uh, the N32, which was the second uh, version of the chip. And uh, due to the uh, chip shortage, we now have the H32 machine. If you go ahead and place an order for either the X2 or the original Aquila, you're either going to get one of those three uh, machines and it's very likely you're going to get an N or an H machine because they're the latest. Uh, Vox, it seems like Vox Lab had to uh, make some changes uh, and pick a different manufacturer to, to meet the demand of the machine. Um, during the chip crisis, which uh, shortage rather, which everyone has been affected by in one way or another, even if you don't directly know anything from the automotive industry to anything related to computers, uh, the chip shortage has definitely affected. Uh, even brands like the Raspberry Pi, for example, are being affected by things like this. Uh, but what's uh, what's happening is the H32 specifically machine uh, has an issue. It has well, it has two uh, issues. One, of the firmware that shipped on the machine has a bug where the firmware can get locked up during a certain situation uh, where the thermistor can get unplugged or can fall out or can get um, shorted where the firmware locks up but continues heating the machine if it was printing actively which is obviously an issue a continuous uh, continuous uh, heating could potentially cause a fire uh, there's a small chance of it but it is definitely there um, and you know, it seems like Vox Lab is actively trying to, to fix this uh, with a firmware update. They've released one already that you can get if you have a BL Touch, uh, and they're working on getting third-party uh, um, uh, third-party firmware working on that machine as well. I know Alex uh, that has helped uh, bring the Gyres UI to the Aquilas is working with them uh, to uh, be able to give us some kind of firmware which is really cool so you you will have options and protection soon but at the moment uh, right now it's October 7th um, right now you do not have that and the, the, the problem is that the machine is still being marketed as open source open source means you should have the source code you should be able to compile it however you want you should be able to modify it however you want uh, but at the moment you can't it is locked up uh, and only Vox Lab can provide um, the source code to that and they have actually provided some level of source code, but it requires a, a software called Kale, which has a very expensive license. It is not for just individuals. It is uh, a business style uh, application um, that is a, way more difficult to use than something that you know a, a regular consumer would be able to uh, use themselves, like VS Code, for example. So they're working on bringing that to you. So if you currently have an H32 machine, um, you know, you can look at it several ways. One way is to just uh, monitor your machine, make sure that you do regular maintenance, make sure your thermistor is not loose or could get unplugged. Uh, make sure you're monitoring your prints with a camera or only, you know, if you can't afford a camera or don't want one, um, only print with it when you are there and you can see it in person and you could intervene in some way. If not, get yourself a Wi-Fi camera, get yourself a Wi-Fi smoke detector, get yourself uh, some outlets uh, that you can turn off with your phone uh, via Wi-Fi and get yourself one of those automatic uh, fire extinguishers that kind of looks like a ball that you can put on top of a 3D printer where if there is any kind of actual fire, it would uh, be able to um, uh, put that out. Uh, in fact, I'm mentioning this because if you have any kind of 3D printer, no matter which one it is, no matter even if it has uh, a protection from this, you still have a he heating element, you have several heating elements, temperatures are high, there could be a failure of some sort that could lead to some kind of fire. So no matter what kind of printer you have, it would be a great idea to be able to monitor it and be able to turn off the power uh, to the machine in case there is an issue. Uh, one thing I wanted to note regarding that is one of my first printers 
features the original Ender, the 8-bit board, the really loud steppers and fans. Uh, it came with an earlier version of Marlin that didn't even have uh, protection at all, but nobody had this outroar about it, kind of like this H32 machine. Obviously, they weren't saying that it had protection, but it just didn't have it. So it could have burned down your house any minute, uh, but no one seemed to, uh, like I said, have this uh, angry effect to it. I'm even getting accused of recommending a printer that will burn down your house. And obviously that's not true. I would never wish harm on anyone that watches my videos or follows me in any way. Um, I wouldn't want that happening to me. And I definitely don't think Vox Lab wanted that as well. No one wants this uh, kind of stigma and negativity over their brand. Uh, you know, obviously their business, they're trying to make money. So they're gonna make moves that'll make them more money. Um, you know, don't get that twisted, but no one wants, uh, no one's like an evil mega corp, you know, put out there. It's not a cartoon character. They're trying to run a business and something like this can ruin their business. So I definitely think that they're going to try their best uh, to fix this issue. You know, like I mentioned, you can handle this multiple ways. You can be really upset about it and return your machine. You could be really upset about it and try to do something yourself. Like I said, monitor, uh, you know, get yourself tools that would prevent fires, things along those nature. Or you can look at it as you're buying components and hopefully after videos like this, you're fully aware of the situation and you know what you're getting into. If you do get an H32 machine, you can always get a different board. For example, you can get a Creality uh, board and display and that those two things plus that printer would still cost less than an Ender 3. Keep in mind the Vox Lab is a clone of the Ender 3. And what made it really special is the fact that it can print really well for such a low price. The price to performance on these machines is really incredible. And the fact that the chassis and the, just the way that it's built is so simple, you could turn it into anything. Ender extender kits, you can even make it smaller, which I've seen, which is really cool. You can turn it uh, into completely different machines if you wanted to, or you can just print as is and get really great quality for very little bit of money. So yes, you're buying a, uh, a cheap printer. Yes, the company definitely made a mistake with this chip uh, and they definitely made a mistake by not testing the firmware uh, enough uh, you know, to find that issue themselves and solve it before the public got their hands on it. So that's definitely on them and they know it. And everyone should know it too. You should be fully aware that that's the scenario. Uh, but even, even so, even knowing everything, my personal take on it is you're getting actually really good hardware um, in terms of you know the stepper motors, the frame itself, the, the bed. All of the components on the machine are actually very solid, minus the extruder and the fans. Um, so actually for the price, it's $160 to about $200, depending on which one you get. I still think it's an incredible deal for a printer. Uh, it's great for a first machine. Um, you know, because it, it works so well out of the box without you having to do anything or modify anything, it'll still do great. Uh, if you can put up with a couple of things, like I said, the extruder could be problematic and the fans are a little bit loud and they tend to fail. Those two things definitely happen. And now there's also the H32 scenario. So there's that kind of angle on it. But I still think uh, you guys should uh, definitely check out the Vox Lab Aquila. I still think it's valid, especially if you get the N32 or the G32 machine. If there's some way to just get one of those, I would. And if you do get an H32, because there's no way to actually pick, I wouldn't worry too much. There's lots of ways you can still have a lot of fun and you can still have a really good machine, even if you did get the H32 chip. All right, guys, that's my opinion on it buyer beware that's the current situation hopefully soon all of that will be solved if you have any kind of question or concern uh, definitely let me know in the comments but also think about joining our discord server we have hundreds of people in there helping each other out sharing prints troubleshooting the uh, machines it's a great community we're building in there definitely check it out also if you'd like to support this channel I started a patreon uh, a lot of people were asking me about that and there's some perks in there that you can get and also some perks for the discord channel um, that'll make you stand out of the group. So we could all, uh, you know, help each other out. And if you wanna help out the channel, uh, that's one way to do it directly. And that way I can give back in some way, shape or form as well. So there you go, guys, that's all for me. If you have any questions, concern, let me know down uh, below. And as always, I'll see you all in the comments. Later.